I've been wearing the brand new Polar Grit X for a little over a week now. Running, working, sleeping, changing diapers, all those things. But how does it stack up to the old champion in the segment, the Garmin Phoenix 6? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Dave from ChaseTheSummit.com and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Polar Grit X in a more in-depth review on how it stacks up against the old champion, the Garmin Phoenix 6. I just wanted to share my experience on what it's been like to wear the Polar Grit X as a daily driver, day in and day out, sleeping with it, running with it, training with it, all that stuff. And yes, I know these aren't in the same price category, we'll be talking about that later on, but they are in the same market. Polar is marketing the Polar Grit X as kind of an outdoor enthusiast watch and that's really where the Garmin Phoenix 6 shines and I think it's kind of the king of the crop when it comes to the outdoor market. I've logged about 70 miles wearing the Polar Grit X on my treadmill, on the roads, on the trails, a little bit of everything and I've learned a lot about it along the way. First off let's talk about the design and the build quality of the Polar Grit X versus the Garmin Phoenix 6. I really enjoy the look of the Polar Grit X, it's got a very minimalistic appearance, it doesn't scream for attention which I really like. The bezel of the Polar Grid X is a solid stainless steel. It does feel very durable. I actually do prefer the design of the Polar Grid X compared to my Garmin Phoenix 6. However, when it comes to pure build quality, I gotta still give it to the Garmin Phoenix 6. This thing's a tank, it's got a metal front and back cover, it's got a sapphire lens, it's nearly indestructible. This one has seen probably seven or 800 miles of trail use and it still looks brand new, with the exception of one tiny chip up top here. Polar Grid X is 64 grams, while the Garmin Garmin Phoenix 6 is 84 grams and that 20 grams on your wrist is really noticeable. This feels a lot heavier than the Grid X. I can wear the Polar Grid X all day and I can also wear it to bed without an issue whereas the Garmin Phoenix 6 some days I like to take off when I go to bed because it's a little bit heavy and bulky to wear when I'm trying to sleep. In terms of battery life with the Polar Grid X it's kind of a double-edged sword. In GPS tracking mode the battery life on the Grid X is actually really good. You get up to 40 hours of battery life advertised and I'm seeing a consumption of like two to three percent per hour when I'm out on the trails. This does vary if you change your backlight settings or you use sensors or anything like that but out of the box you'll get about 40 hours of use in GPS mode. Now the Garmin Phoenix 6 does advertise about 36 hours of GPS activity and that's pretty accurate as well. However However, there are a lot of settings in this thing and you can tweak things and you can bump it up to around 40 hours if you try by turning down the backlight settings or tweaking your GPS settings a little bit. There's a lot more fine tuning that you can do on the Phoenix 6. So all in all, I think GPS battery life on these watches is very similar. In terms of standby or smartwatch mode, it's a whole different story. The Polar Grit X offers about seven days of standby time, whereas the Garmin Phoenix 6 offers about 14 days of standby time. And if you add in regular GPS use on a given day, I find myself charging the Polar Grit X about every three to four days, which isn't that great. However, if you disable the all day heart rate tracking and only turn it on at night, it does increase the battery life substantially. You can get a couple of weeks after that. And I find myself charging the Garmin Phoenix 6 every nine or 10 days, even with regular GPS activity. In terms of usability, the menu system on the Polar Grid X is really nice. It's very simple, it's well laid out, it's intuitive, it's easy to navigate using the built-in touchscreen. The menu system on the Garmin Phoenix 6 is also very intuitive. It has a lot more options and features built in, and there's no touch display so you do everything through the buttons but it's not that big of a deal. I actually prefer the buttons but that's just me. Some might see the lack of menu options on the Polar Grid X as a negative but I kind of like it. It's not overwhelming at all. However, there are some frustrating quirks with the Polar Grid X. First of all, you can't customize the watch face on the Polar Grid X so basically what it comes with out of the box is it. You can choose whether it's analog or digital but that's really the extent of it. On the Garmin Phoenix 6 you can fully customize the watch face. You can also download third party watch face from the Connect IQ store. There's a couple of hundred to choose from on there. So there's really a lot you can do with the watch face on the Phoenix 6. That said, the Polar Grid X does have a lot built in. You can swipe through different screens and widgets, and there's enough for most people who don't care about customization. Another difference on the Polar Grid X is you can only have four data fields per page during an activity, whereas you can have up to six on the Garmin Phoenix 6. That's a lot more information you can see at a glance instead of having to flip through the pages on the Polar Grid X. Here's a weird one. The Polar Grid X actually doesn't tell you how much battery life you have left when you're in an activity. 
there's actually no way to see the status of your battery unless you pause and look at this tiny icon that shows up at the top of the screen. On the Garmin Fenix 6, you can add in a battery status field as a data field on one of your activity pages, and you can see how much percentage or hours you have left at a glance. This is pretty important to me. I have races that last up to 24 hours and knowing the status of the battery in my watch is pretty important. Also don't wanna to have to stop my activity to get an idea of how much time I have left. Not sure why they left this out, but it seems like something they could roll in pretty easily in a firmware update. Another weird thing about the Polar Grid X is during an activity, it disconnects the Bluetooth from your phone. So you don't get any notifications from your phone. Something I really like on the Garmin Phoenix 6 when I'm out on a run and my wife texts me, I can glance down and see what she said without having to dig my phone out. So I know whether or not it's important or not and I can just leave my phone back there and continue to run. But on the Polar Grit X, there are no notifications. You don't get any emails or texts, nothing like that. And there's no option to turn that on or off. Another really odd thing about the Polar Grit X is there's no way to turn it off. Seriously, there's no power button on this watch. If you're someone like me and you've got multiple devices, this is gonna sit on a shelf and just burn through its battery until it dies, and I know that's not healthy for a lithium ion cell. The Polar Grid X is marketed as kind of like an outdoor enthusiast watch, so you'd assume there would be a bunch of tools on here to help you navigate or orienteer. However, that's not really the case. Even simple tools like an altimeter or a compass aren't present unless you're in an activity. There's also really no way to display your GPS coordinates, which is kind of important to some users. However, on the Garmin Phoenix 6, there is an altimeter and there is a compass and you can display your coordinates. You can also download a whole bunch of tools from the Garmin Connect IQ store, which can be really useful if you need them. The Polar Grit X also features a back to start function, which is nice to have on a running or a hiking activity. However, this isn't a true back to start. It's not going to retrace your steps back to the starting point. It actually just points an arrow in the general direction of where you started from and tries to guide you in that general direction. I don't find this to be terribly useful because in most cases, you're not going to be able to walk in a straight line back to the start of your route, especially if you're on a mountain or in a canyon or something like that. You can't just walk in a straight line. I guess it's kind of useful. It'll give you some sense of bearing. Now on the Garmin Phoenix 6, whole different story. You have Back to start retracing your steps. You can go in the general direction, just like on the Polar Grid X. You can even calculate a specific route back to start using trails or roads. It's got full built-in mapping, so you can do just about anything. Another oversight on the Polar Grid X is that there's no breadcrumb map during an activity. So if you go on a trail run, you're not gonna see a little map of where you've been. I'm not talking about like full topographic mapping with like trail names and stuff like that. Just a simple squiggly line letting you know what kind of track you're on. That can be really handy in a lot of situations, and the Grid X simply doesn't have it. What's weird is I know the Grid X can do this because it has Komoot navigation, which kind of uses a simple map like this, so I'm not sure why they don't just leave it on all the time for any activity. Komoot navigation is a welcome addition to the Polar Grit X. It does give you some usable turn-by-turn -turn directions on basic routes, but it does have a few quirks. First of all, if you start a commute route, there's actually no way to get out of it during the activity unless you stop your activity. The only workaround I could find is to actually initiate a back to start and that will cancel the commute route but that's not terribly intuitive. Alternatively, if you're already in an activity, there's no way to start a route. So if you plan to run to point A and then navigate to point B, you'd have to stop your activity at point A, start a new activity with a navigation built in, and then go from there to there. It's kind of confusing. I don't know why you can't just do it midstream. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. There's also no way to pan or zoom in on the breadcrumb map on the Komoot integration on the Polar Grid X. So there's really no way to know where you are in the bigger picture. And there's also no waypoint support in commute navigation. I really like to use that for like aid stations or water sources. Again, for a watch that's kind of marketed as like an outdoorsy watch, I don't get why they don't have some of these tools built in. So yeah, in the navigation department, the Garmin Phoenix 6 is still the king. This thing is probably the most powerful watch when it comes to navigation. You've got full mapping, points of interest, waypoint support. You can build custom courses in Garmin Connect and you can upload to the watch and do all sorts of things, get turn-by-turn -turn navigation. I mean, it's kind of like an endless list of features on the Garmin Phoenix 6 for navigation. Not really a fair comparison here. We're talking about the king of navigation against a newcomer. And I think for a lot of people, the commute navigation could be enough to get you by. All right, it might seem like I'm complaining a lot about the Polar Grid X, but it does actually do a lot right. Let's talk about that right now. 
GPS accuracy. I was pretty surprised in this. I had never tested a Polar device before, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I had heard a lot of complaints online and in forums. In most cases, the Polar Grit X did outperform the Garmin Phoenix 6 in most of my GPS activities. I honestly wasn't really expecting this. That said, the Garmin Phoenix 6 is definitely not perfect. It's not the best GPS recorder on the market, but the Polar Grit X is definitely a step up from it in my experience so far. Heart rate accuracy. This is a big one, a really big one. The Polar Grit X has the best wrist-based heart rate sensor I've ever tested on any watch. That's a big statement, but I stand behind it. I'm truly impressed with the wrist-based heart rate sensor on the Grit X. I went on several runs wearing the Polar Grit X along with a Polar H9 chest strap and the Polar OH1 Plus arm strap. In almost every case, the Polar Grit X almost had identical results to the chest or arm strap. I'm talking within one or two percent variation, like really close accuracy here. And I can't say the same for my Garmin Phoenix 6. The Garmin Phoenix 6 is mediocre at best when it comes to the wrist-based sensor. It tends to drop off when you go into that higher 160, 170 heart rate zone. It stays down in the 150s for, for some reason. And on the Polar Grid X, it stays up that whole time. This new Precision Prime 2.0 heart rate sensor they're using on the Polar Grid X is definitely the real deal. And I've been really impressed so far. So having a good heart rate sensor is a huge deal because all of the metrics you get out of these fancy watches with like recovery time and training load and VO2 max, it all relies on having a good heart rate sensor. However, if you want the absolute best accuracy, there is no substitute for wearing a chest or an arm strap like the H9 or the OH1 Plus. Another feature on the Polar Grit X that I was surprised with is the running power. The Polar Grit X is one of the few devices on the market that features running power, and this does it right from the wrist itself without a separate sensor on board. But to test the Polar Grit X's running power, I went on a couple of runs while while also wearing my dedicated stride pod. And the stride pod is really like the gold standard for running power right now. And the results from the Polar Grit X compared to the stride pod were pretty similar. You can see the trend line between the two devices is almost exactly the same. However, they are about 80 watts apart. And that's only because these two devices aren't calibrated exactly. With some calibration, I could probably get these more in line. But seeing that the trend line is so similar on the Polar Grit X, it means there's a lot of potential here. However, for the best running power accuracy the stride pod is still the king i did some short intervals where i ran like a quarter of a mile came to a stop turned around and then ran back a quarter of a mile real fast back and forth and at those stops at the end of each interval the stride pod picked up that dip in energy whereas the polar grit x didn't see that. So that told me that the stride pod was a lot more responsive. And also the stride pod does take wind into account. So on a particularly windy day, the stride pod will pick up that headwind and it will be represented in your results. Whereas the Grit X is only seeing what's happening from your wrist. But still, for a lot of runners out there, this is going to be an excellent tool for your training. The Garmin Phoenix 6, on the other hand, doesn't feature any sort of running power. You can pair this with the stride pod sensor, but it can't do it by itself. As far as sleep tracking goes, I was really impressed with the Polar Grit X. It picks up all those small variations, like if I have to get up to go to the bathroom or get some water downstairs, it picks up those small interruptions in my sleep, whereas my Garmin tends to ignore that. And also, if I wake up super early in the morning, like four o'clock to go for a run really early, sometimes my Garmin thinks I slept till seven or eight, whereas the Polar Grid X picks that up every time. The nightly recharge score is a great way to plan your day based on how much rest you got the night before. The Polar Grid X and the Garmin Phoenix 6 both feature some smartwatch functionality. Basically, they can both read your text messages or your emails. They'll also alert you of calendar events that are coming up. You can answer or decline phone calls with both of these. However, the Garmin Phoenix 6 does have calendar integration with a widget where it'll show the agenda for the day, which I really like. A big feature that the Garmin Phoenix 6 has that the Polar Grid X doesn't have is music support. You can actually play back music directly from the watch to Bluetooth headphones. It supports MP3s, Spotify, Deezer, and a few other services, and that list is still growing. Unfortunately, on the Polar Grit X, there's no music support. Let's talk about the ecosystem, Polar vs. Garmin. We got Polar Flow vs. Garmin Connect. Honestly, these are the two best ecosystems I've ever tried. 
Both the Polar Flow app and Polar website work excellent, and so does Garmin Connect. I haven't had an issue with either one, and really it just comes down to personal preference at this point. They both offer a ton of functionality. Garmin does have a little bit of the edge because they do have that course builder built in. However, Polar has a whole suite of training programs that you can do right from the website and upload them to the watch. And I really like the calendar view that Polar has in Flow where it shows your steps and your activities for the day. It's just very intuitive and well laid out. The same goes for the smartphone applications. I feel like there could be a whole video on just the ecosystems alone, but really these are two of the best ecosystems. It just comes down to personal preference and they'll both do the job. Do you like red and white or do you like gray and blue? As far as pricing goes, the Garmin Phoenix 6 comes in at $799. And the Polar Grit X comes in at a more reasonable $429. And honestly, at $429, I think the Polar Grit X is one of the best values in the GPS smartwatch world right now. So at the end of the day, what's the better watch, the Garmin Phoenix 6 or the Polar Grit X? That's a little bit confusing. If money wasn't a thing, I'd definitely go with the Garmin Phoenix 6. However, money is a thing. And if you're looking for the best price to value equation here, the Polar Grit X is really hard to beat. And honestly, I don't think these two are really competing against each other, despite what everyone thinks. The Garmin Phoenix 6 is like a true expedition and adventure watch. It has full topographic mapping. It's got more smartwatch functionalities and music. And it's for that person that's gonna be off the beaten path and really values being able to root right on the watch itself. Whereas the Polar Grit X is for trail runners and mountain bikers and triathletes, people who aren't necessarily getting off the beaten path all that often and are just looking for a tool with good accuracy that's going to help them train. And that's where this thing excels, accuracy and training. The Polar Grit X is really striking a sweet spot between performance and price. And with tools like Running Power and Training Load Pro, I think a lot of ultra marathon runners and triathletes and mountain bikers are gonna find a lot of value in the Polar Grit X. That's all I got for today. If you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, give me a thumbs up down below and consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps me keep me motivated to keep doing what I'm doing here. And there's so much to cover with these watches, I couldn't do it all in one video. If you have something in particular you wanna ask, make sure to comment down below and I'll try to respond to you. I hope you're all safe and staying apart and getting outside as much as you can. And I'll see you in the next one.